evening, we celebrate nine exemplary individuals who have contributed to making this a jubilee of bounty, of restoration, and of liberty by what they have done directly for this university community and in the state of Israel and for what they have accomplished elsewhere in the name of shared values which have become the common inheritance of so much of mankind. We thank you for coming this evening to share in the Jubilee at Ben Gurion University. What I would like to do is essentially to share with you again what is our vision for Israel, for the Negev, in the spirit of David Ben Gurion, our greatest leader in modern time, what this university is doing and what is committed to do and why these magnificent people here represent the lights that we want to follow and together to accomplish what Ben Gurion told us, what the Prophet told us, to be indeed a light unto the nations. What is the vision for Israel? It is a physical component, it has economic and social component and cultural component. Of course, it has a security component, and I won't get today with issues of security. We have to find our own way to live in peace in this region, and I'm sure we'll find a way. Economically, we know the way. The way is through brain-oriented industries all over Israel, with education, with emphasis on excellence, but this excellence, this education, have to be shared by all. It has to have equal opportunity, both to the successful and rich neighborhood in Tel Aviv, as well as the poor neighborhood in the Beersheba. It has to have a physical picture, because if Israel will become just a congested state between Hadera and Dera, ugly, without the appropriate fast trains, without the appropriate architecture. So we might be $25,000 GNP per capita, maybe $30,000 GNP per capita. The quality of life will be low. Quality of life means the time you spend on the road, the congestion, the pollution, and also, as function of inequality, the sense of personal safety. In that regard, we need symbols. The young people that are coming here from all over Israel, 50% from the Negev, 50% from the Galilee, from Jerusalem, from Tel Aviv, and survey of the Council of Higher Education show today that this is the preferred university overall number one. They need role models. Sometimes they don't find it in politics. Sometimes, rarely, they find it in politics. We look for examples from around the world and examples from inside our own community. Dr. Heinz Oz Deichmann, a religious man, a, the most successful shoeman in the world, a private company, started one shoe store, today 600 shoe stores, he produced, I think, 70 million pairs a year. But he gave a lecture yesterday in the Deichmann Chair for Business Ethics that what is important in business is not only making money, is how you make money and what you're doing with this money. He committed his life in India, in Africa, and in Ben Gurion University. All over the place you see his mark and root. And he's also a supporter of economic cooperation between the Israeli and the Palestinians. God bless you, Dr. Heinz Osdeit. Permit me to depart for a moment from the procedures at hand so as to join in congratulating Heinz Os Dijkman, Sidney Gelber, and Hyman Kreitman on receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award. Throughout my years at the university, and especially during my tenure as rector, I was fortunate to be able to rely on the penetrating perception of managerial and academic matters, on their wisdom, experience, and sound counsel. 
they have never let me down. In some ways, I developed towards them the kind of feelings one has towards a PhD advisor, a combination of admiration, respect, and friendship. If I could go back to my student days, and I wish I could, I wouldn't hesitate to choose each one of them to be my mentor. We cherish, we hold in high esteem those who significantly contribute to the preservation of knowledge, to the enhancement of knowledge, and to dissemination of knowledge. And moreover, we honor those who have demonstrated the leadership, the character, and the love for mankind that make the search for knowledge worthwhile. Thank you, Dr. Dachman. Would you address the assembly? Thank you. Dear friends, dignitaries, I am deeply moved to stand here on this platform to get honored in this way. I really did not want it, but I could not convince my friend Avishai that I am not the right person for this. He thinks I am and now I have to follow. I obey him. <laughs> not only in this, <laughs> as you all know. <laughs> uh, I'm very happy and thankful. Every visit to Israel is a new experience of our life. The joy we have felt, my wife and myself, listening to the order of the Declaration of the State of Israel, hearing the Hatikva, I already spoke about it. I mentioned at this occasion to somebody, we cannot sing this Hatikva. We Germans do not have this hope, this vision for our state. Personally, it's different. You can do it. You are happy people. You are, you are wonderful people. What a vision for all the young people. And I came to know a lot of the students yesterday during my lecture. I saw them sitting before me. I, I saw how they took the world. This is a wonderful occasion to speak to students here in this area. It's a pity we had no time. I wanted to discuss with them. Okay, maybe on another occasion. But greatest thing I have experienced today. We went, as always, on our visits to Stebokea. This is where the most important thing that is, a, that is what we have to tell everyone in Europe or in America, especially in Germany. What happens there? What is the meaning of this? Ben Gurion stream fighting against uh, dry land, against desertification. I must not tell you, you know, this morning after the function, one function, somebody hugged me. I saw the hands in front of me. He came a little bit from the side. On one arm, he had numbers printed in Auschwitz. This man and his brother escaped from Auschwitz. Can you imagine how I felt? And this man, he hugged me. He told me, I love you. I saw you last time and before. It was so important for you. He told me I have had two, two th three things are important in my life. First, I had a revelation of God in my life when I was rescued from Auschwitz. Then, secondly, maybe I forget it was, I, 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 I can't bring it all together, but when he saw us, my wife and myself, one or two years ago, ago, he had another revelation. He says that was another revelation of God opening himself, pouring love into us Germans and Christians 
he really used these words. Who, wer nicht liebt, bleibt im Tode. I try to, to translate it in, it's a biblical word, uh, to translate it into English. Who does not love remains in death. Life starts when we overcome barriers. When there is no more hatred, when there is love. But love is not making words. Love starts when we give our life for each other, when we help each other, when we join hands each other. And that is the greatest miracle that you give us Germans the chance to join hands with you in specific works here university, that is for me Israel. You cannot do all over Israel, but here you can do certain things that I tried to and I did it. Love with word, not with word and tongue, but in deed and truth. In deed and truth that is fits to to what we heard yesterday. I will make it short. I thank you very much for accepting us and that you give us further chance, chance for cooperation. I found one psalm of your Bible and our Bible. So with the grace of God we can read your Bible also. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, among the heathen, among the nations, the Goyim, the Lord has done great things to the, for them. If the Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goes forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Thank you very much. Our Jewish brother, you are. Thank you. Amen. One, eight. One, two, three. Bravo. Thank you. All of you for coming here and uh, thank you. Hi, Professor Fischer and the other partakers of the podium for this uh, lecture we have heard. This was really encouraging and uh, it will help us to understand better economic development 
you should give this lecture in my country. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, I think there's not a lack of good lectures in that region, but people are not going to listen to it. Maybe it, we must go down a little bit more than that we start to, to listen again and to, to renew the country. It is really, it is a, is a bad feeling about it. I'm so glad that here in this country the things are going the, the other way, that your economy is so strong I did not know. We take part in it in the export of Israel because we are importing goods from Israel and you know from this wonderful cooperation between a kibbutz Fulata in the in northern Gal in upper Galilee and a Palestinian company in Hebron. And this works tremendously despite all the political uh, difficulties which come up. The merchandise always arrived in time and in, in good quality. I must tell you, go, I must encourage other people to, to do other things. You have to do small things. Many small things will be a big thing after some while. Uh, what shall I say to this building? Mathematics. Every one of us is, uh, has to do with mathematics. Difficult approach. I wish I knows it a little bit better. Accounting, something which we have to learn, but what is deeper behind it, mathematic, mathematic feeling sometimes I think I have it, but uh, really to understand all the connections, the relationship between with the distances between people and between things and, and uh, continents and between stars. That is, you need really to, to be a good mathematician, to understand this order which exists, to express these orders by figures, by numbers. And I hope that the faculty which is going to occupy this wonderful building uh, will see all the connections and all, also the background also of all scientific uh, doing. I want to bring not all. I have a friend of mine, a mathematic, mathematic professor, gave me some some. Uh, is it a cita citations? Albert Einstein. <laughs> his, his religious feeling takes the form of a rapturous amazement at the harmony of natural law, which reveals an intelligence of such superiority that, compared with it, all the systematic thinking and acting of human beings is an utterly insignificant reflection. <laughs> Eugen Wigner, won a Nobel Prize, who won the Nobel Prize for Physics, he was expelled from Nazi Germany. He wrote, the enormous usefulness of mathematics in the natural science is something bordering on the mysteries, mysterious, and there is no rational explanation for it. It is an article of faith. Sir Fred Hoyle, famous Cambridge mathematician and theoretical astronomer, seems to believe in a super intelligence directing things. The universe is an obvious fix. There are too many things that look accidental that are not. Why is it that a highly abstract subject like mathematics, which is a discovery of creation by the human mind, can be so useful in understanding the natural world? He could see that it was so, but could not understand why. It was a mystery to him. And yet to anyone who accepts the first sentence in the Torah and believes in the Creator, it is no mystery. What could be more reasonable than that the same creator who made the world as it is and built into its laws should so design the human mind that it was capable of exploring those laws, finding a suitable language, the powerful language of mathematics, to describe them. What an overwhelming sense of discovery Isaac Newton must have experienced when he realized that one simple and elegant mathematical law, the fact that the gravitational attraction between two heavenly bodies was proportional to the inverse square of the distance between them 
hopefully somebody can understand that, should be shown, <laughs> should be shown to, uh, to explain the fact that the planets moved in ellipses with the sun as focus. Newton was so moved by this manifestation of the wonder of creation that he published his work in the hope that it would lead the people to believe in the creator. Patients will go in that they should take into account this higher order which already exists. The creator who is in charge of the creation, not subject to it. <laughs>